This video is for the EOG inactive release test for explanations for problems 11 through 15. Number 11. When 8 is added to the number that is produced by doubling the number x, the result is equal to 8 times the number that is 5 less than x. What is the value of x? The first thing I'm going to want to do is read this problem again and highlight information that is important. When 8 is added, okay, so plus, to the number, which number? The number that's produced by what? Doubling the number x. The result is equal to 8 times, 8 times, the number that is 5 less than, 5 less than what? It didn't say minus, it said less than, 5 less than what? x. What is that value? So I, but if I don't write this equation correctly, I'm not going to be able to solve it correctly. So you might need to read it to yourself again. But when it says 8 is added, 8 is added, 8 plus, added to what? The number, which number? The number that is produced by doubling the number x. So 8 is added to the number produced by doubling the number x. So doubling number x, that's 2x. So 8 is added to 2x, and that is going to be equal to... Now, I'm on the other side of the equation, 8 times, 8 times what? The number that is 5 less than x. It didn't say 5 minus x, it said 5 less than x. That means you're taking 5 away from x. So that's going to be x minus 5. Well, you have to multiply 8 to it first, so it says 8 times 5 less than x. Once you have this part, it's a lot easier because you guys know how to solve, but getting that part is your hardest step. So I say 8 plus 2x, I'm going to distribute 8x minus 40. Now I need to get my x's on the same side equal sign. You can subtract 8, 8x from each other, or you can subtract 2x. It doesn't matter which way. I'm going to subtract 2x because I like to keep my x's positive. This comes down. This cancels out. 8 take away 2 is 6. Bring down the 40. Now I want to get x by itself. I need the 40 to go away. It's negative. So I'm going to do the opposite and add 40 to both sides. This cancels, this becomes 48 equals 6x. Well, x is being multiplied to 6, so I'm going to divide both sides by 6, and x equals 8. And I'm going to go back, and that's what the question says. What is the value of x? x equals 8. Number 12. It says that in triangle WXY, Line segment WY is congruent to line segment XY. The perimeter of the triangle is 76 inches. So again, this is my triangle. WY, this side, is congruent. That means equal to or the same. Okay. Equal or same as XY. So this side and this side are the same. Okay, and I'm going to put a little mark there. Let me know those two sides are equal. They're telling me that the perimeter is 76 inches. So I know that my perimeter is 76 inches. Well, to find the perimeter, what do you do? You add up all the side lengths. Well, I have this side, and since it's equal, that should that this side has to be that. Now I just need to add them all up. So I have 3n minus 4 plus 3n minus 4 plus, you know, equals what? The perimeter, which is... 76. Now I need to combine my terms and always go to the sign in front. So 3m plus 3m plus 1m makes it 7m. Negative 4 plus negative 4 makes it negative 8. From here I just need to solve for x. So I'm going to add 8 to both sides to get m by itself. That means 7m equals 84. Now I need to divide both sides by 7 since they're being multiplied so I can get m by itself. Okay. If you don't know that one to the top of your head, you can always work it out with long division because you don't have a calculator. 7 goes into 8 one time. Carry the 1. Bring down the 4. 7 goes into 14 twice. So that means that m is equal to 12. And the question says, where is it? How many inches long is 
WX. Well, luckily, WX is just M, so my answer is 12. If they had asked me how long is WY, I'd have to plug 12 in. 3 times 12 minus 4. 3 times 12 is 36 minus 4, 32. Okay, they didn't ask me that, so I'm lucky. This is my answer, but be ready in case they try to make it harder and ask you that. 13. Kyle is a salesman and his fixed monthly earnings include a fixed monthly salary and a commission that is a fixed percentage of his total sales for the month. Kyle's total sales for the month of January were 15000 and his total earnings were 2550 Kyle's total sales for the month of February were 25000 and his total earnings were 3050 What is Kyle's fixed monthly salary? Okay, so I'm going to read that again. His monthly earnings include a fixed monthly salary, okay, that doesn't change, same every month, and then commission. Well, what's commission? Um, this is when if you're working at a store and someone helps you buy stuff or try on stuff or try and stuff on a shoe store, they, the person who helped you who was working there, gets a percentage of how much stuff you buy. That's called commission. So they get a percent, okay, a fixed percentage of the total sale, how much stuff is sold. So to make this, I'm going to turn this into a table so that I can keep it straight. I know that in January, his sale, I'm actually going to bring this down so I have more space. Okay. His sale, and then his actual earnings, okay? He made 15000 in January. That's how much he sold. Which made him take home $2,550. The next month, he sold $25,000, and his paycheck to take home was $3,500. The question says, what is his fixed monthly salary? Not the percent, not the money off commission, the fixed monthly salary. This is if he sells $0 of sales. How much money is he going to make? That's what they're asking. They're asking for the y-intercept. So I need to work backwards until my sales, which represent my x, is zero. First off, I'm going to see, I have a table now, so I'm going to see what happens. I increased $10,000. On this side, I increased $500. That means every time I sell $10,000, I get paid $500 more. Well, that same thing works if you're going backwards. If, you, if he sells $10,000 less, that would mean how much? $5,000. And if he goes down $500 on the other side, what's that? $2,050. Because the slope has to stay the same, right? So every time you increase $10,000, your salary increases $500. But if you're working backwards, then the opposite would happen. Okay, the problem is we're at 5,000, but that's not quite zero, is it? Okay, so I'm just going to erase this to have some space. I can see that my slope is changing y over changing x, so $500 every time I sell $10,000. Well, what if, I, what if I go back from that? If I reduce this, okay, if I cut them both in half, that means every time, let's just kind of do this over here. Every time I sell $5,000 worth of stuff, I'm going to get $250. Well, that's exactly how much I want to go back. I want to go back $5,000, which would put me at zero. So if I go back $5,000 on that side, I got to go back $250 on this side. So what number, when I add $250 to it, gives me $2,050? I don't know. I got to subtract it. And I'm working backwards. Okay? I gotta borrow. This becomes one, this becomes ten, eighteen. Okay? So what that means is if he doesn't have anybody come in the store and he sells zero dollars worth of sales, he's still gonna get paid eighteen hundred dollars. But every five thousand he spends, he gets two fifty more. Or every ten thousand dollars somebody spends, he gets five hundred more. Sorry, so that was the answer, 1800. All right, 14. In the table below, y is a linear function of x. What is the value of y when x is 0? 
So they're saying when x is zero, what's y? So another phrase, hopefully you're already thinking, is they're asking me for the what? The y-intercept. I need to know when x is zero, what's y? One way to do this is to find out what's happening. Anytime they give you a table, you need to find the difference. So from 3 to 5, and going up 2. 5 to 7, I'm going up 2. From 5 to negative 3, I'm going down. I'm subtracting 8. From negative 3 to negative 11, I'm subtracting 8. Okay? So if I was finding my slope, it's always changing y over changing x, between down 8 over 2. Well, what does that reduce to? Negative 4 over 1. So that means every time I go down 4 on my y, I go up 1 on my x. So I need to work backwards from my table. I'm going to just rewrite it over here so I have more space. Okay, so 3, 5, 5, and negative 3. And you already said this is going back 8. This is going back 2. If you go back 2 again, you're at 1. And if you go back 8 from here, so what number when I take 8 away from it gives me 5? Well, that's 13. Okay? The problem is I need to get to 0. If I go back 2 more, I'll be at negative 1. That's too far. Okay? And if I go back 8 again, I'm going to be at 21, which is also too far. So when this is 0, what's that? That's what I need to figure out. Well, how far away is this? Plus 1. Is this on my y? How far away is this? I don't know because I don't know it. But I know that if my x's go back 1, this is going to be my y at about 4. So what's between 21 and 13 at 4 away? 17. Okay. So what is the y-intercept? 17. Another option, if this was confusing for you, is you could always graph these points. By using your x and y, you can say, okay, um, at 3, obviously this is not a grid, if I go over 3 and up 5, okay, and if I go over um, 5, and then I'm at down 3 and 7, I'm down negative 11, okay, and then you could graph them and use your slope to work backwards until you saw where it crossed the y-intercept. Again, if I graph it, it would be more accurate, but that's another strategy. So if you don't like doing this, graph these points and work backwards to see where it's going to cross the y-axis. Okay, last one for this video. Beginning in 2000, a sports team increases ticket price by a constant amount each year until 2010. So increasing by a constant amount each year, okay? And it started in 2000. Then they're telling me some information that a ticket cost $48 in 2005 and $55.50 in 2008. If you can't tell by now, I'm really into making tables. So I'm going to go ahead and record this information in a table. 2005, it was $48. In 2008, it was $55.50. Okay. The question says, how much did it cost when? In 2000. They want me to work backwards. They want to know how much was it up here, not down here. Well, first, let's figure out what's happening. From 2005 to 2008, that's an increase of 3. And from 48 to 55.50, that's an increase of $7.50. That means that every year, okay, I'm going to increase, sorry, it's going to be an increase of $7.50 every three years. Well, what is that per year? Well, how many times was three going to 75? 25. So that's going to be 250 per one year. Okay? So that means every year the ticket price increases by 250. Except that we're trying to work backward to get to 2000. We want to know what is it going to be. At 2000. Again, at this point, there's different ways that you could do it to still get the correct answer. Once you know the slope, some people like to use algebra, some people like to use the table. Um, it doesn't matter as long as you get the question correct. Okay, so if you're using the table method, and I'm just going to make some more space over here, you would say, okay, 2008, 2005. If I go back, I'll be at 2002, and um, that means that I need to go back 750. So what's 48 um, subtract 750? Gotta work it out. 
is in second to zero, fifty to just borrow seven, fifty ten to borrow. Um, so that's going to give you zero and forty. Okay. So in two thousand two, it was forty dollars and fifty cents. That's great. That's not what I need. I need it when in two thousand. Okay. Um, if I go back three, I'll be at nineteen ninety nine. That's too far. So I need to go back by one year now. Okay. So instead, I already know that it's what? 250 every year. So if I take 4050 and I subtract 250, that's going to tell me the price um, in 2001, which is 38. So like, oh, yep, so the borrow 3, 10, 38. Okay, and if I go back another year, minus 250. Okay, I'm going to end up with 50 and so it's borrow, it's become 7, it's become 10, so it's 5, 35 and 50. Okay, are there faster ways to do that? Of course, that's just a long explanation of what you're doing. Once you realize the slope, um, you could have realized that you need to go back from 2005 you need to go back five years, five times 250, okay, um, that's going to give you 125 or 1250, and if you take $48 and you subtract 1250, zero, seven, seven, eight, 35, okay. That's obviously the faster way to do it. There's different ways as long as you get 3550. That's the end of this one.